I love snakes, but some people, maybe even you, are terrified of them, or at least uncomfortable around them. I obviously disagree with the aforementioned folks, but in order for our species to conquer this now nonsensical phobia, it's important that we try to understand more about it. So let's talk about why many homo sapiens are scared of snakes, and why you don't have to be anymore. This is Billy and Trips, my pair of ball pythons, and I'm Raph the Hominid. Let's dig into it. As it turns out, about half of us are uncomfortable about snakes, and one third of us have a more intense fear of these beautiful beasts. It's easy to assume that parents teach their children this fear and it's sort of a learned thing, but some clues in our evolutionary story hint that this fear is much more natural. First of all, ever since reptiles and snakes branched off of each other and snakes ended up evolving, our lineage was prime snake food. Phylogenetically speaking, primates, that's us, are very close cousins to the rodents, which turns out to be one of snakes' favorite food. In fact, we shared the exact same lineage with rodents up until about 75 million years ago, which is indeed a long time. But evolution moves more like a tortoise than a hare. Ever since we were little rodent-like creatures, nature would reward those of us, yes, this is what we were, this is us, who were fearful about and careful around snakes. And that big reward was allowing you to live long enough to reproduce, maybe. So if you look at it, nature selected us to be afraid of snakes because it kept us alive, kept our gene pool running. And this could be evidenced by the fact that primates are the best animals at seeing obscured snakes in nature hiding from us, right? We are the best at seeing those snakes, right? And avoiding them, probably, for the most part. The lower half of our field of view actually even focuses better than the top half, probably to help us avoid crossing paths with a serpent. And also in the past, there were snake species that were much bigger. Titanoboa fossils were discovered, and this was essentially a 50-foot-long anaconda, so... I mean, it probably couldn't do some of the things in that movie, Anaconda, but size-wise, you'd be looking more at, like, the Anaconda in that movie than a real Anaconda, which, you know, will top out around 20 feet. So, nature and natural selection may have given us our fear of snakes. But our species, Homo sapiens, are pretty much the first species of animal to render natural selection obsolete. It almost doesn't play a factor anymore in in our evolution anyway. And that's probably because in modernity, we don't have to blend into our surroundings or be able to run away from predators. Generally speaking, everyone has an equal opportunity to reproduce and pass their genes on to the next generation. You know, we got less to worry about now that we have like houses and shoes and stuff. So do we still have to worry about snakes? Well, to make this video short, cause a lot of my viewers live in North America, uh, pretty much no. If you're in North America, don't worry about snakes, all right? I mean, if you don't like them, don't bother them, that's it. Being that it's a continent with not that much venomous snake diversity, so it's not like you live around a bunch of venomous snakes that are constantly, like, getting into living spaces and things like that, we can use those biological advantages, like if we're walking through the woods, to see if there are any potentially dangerous snakes that are hanging out uh, minding their own business, really, but make sure we don't cross their path. Here's a fun fact. Most times a snake bites a person, it's on the person's hands or face. But, surprise, surprise, also most people that are bitten by snakes are under the influence of alcohol at the time that it happens. And thank you, Clint's Reptiles, for that awesome fact. I really like it. So, it pretty much seems safe to say that if you got a drunk person getting bit on the hands or the face, right, and that's most of snake bites. With that being the case, it's safe to say that most snake bites are probably a person's fault, reaching at the snake, holding the snake right in front of its face if they don't know its disposition and things like that. Because, uh, you know, Trips is about an inch tall, he'd have a hard time getting in my face, or my hands, if I was leaving him alone. So here's a foolproof way to not get bitten by snakes if you're scared of snakes. Leave him alone. You leave snake alone, snake leaves you alone. In fact, our American forefathers knew this. Even if you don't agree with the sentiment of the flag the way it's used today, hear me out. The don't tread on me flag has a timber rattlesnake on it. You know why? 
because when settlers got over here from Europe, they're probably running around the woods in the Northeast United States, and they're like, hey, let's kill that snake. And they went up to it, and they were stomping it out, and it bit one of them, and they died. And then they found out, hey, if we don't bother the snake, snake doesn't bother us. So it became the perfect mascot for leave me alone. I mean, that's, it's perfect. Leave me alone or something bad happens, but if you leave me alone, everything's fine. Timber rattlesnake. I will say, I don't think we should be scared of snakes at all. I don't think anyone should be terrified of snakes, but a healthy respect for snakes and a better understanding of them can keep you alive. And let's be clear, the vast, vast majority of snakes, like species of snake, probably individuals too, can do you no physical harm. Billy is like a four, four and a half foot ball python, okay? Python, that big scary word no one likes. She's holding onto my neck decently well just to keep herself supported. It's really no pressure. It's not a lot of pressure at all. Even if she was squeezing super hard, I am a 160 pound person and this is roughly two pounds of snake, right? They can be very strong for their size, but I'm in no physical danger with Billy around my neck. And that is the case for most species of snake, but there are some to look out for. We know there are venomous snakes in the world. And as I mentioned, um, a lot of the North American venomous snakes have rattles on them. So they tell you, hey, I'm over here, leave me alone. That's super easy to avoid them. There are things like water moccasins, copperheads, coral snakes that don't have this kind of rattle. So minus taking a hike and not watching your footing and accidentally stepping on a venomous snake, you should be completely fine. Now, places like Asia, Africa, India is in Asia, but you know what I'm saying. There are like a bunch of venomous snake species and it can be dangerous because a home in these places is like a temperature controlled rodent magnet, right? I mean, everybody's had a rodent problem in their house one way or the other. Uh, snakes eat rodents, as we said, not only rodents, but they will find rodents and eat them. And if you have rodents in your house that are in there to get to your food, well, a snake might also see a nice temperature controlled dwelling with an all you can eat buffet. So it is possible to like in those places to kind of just roll into bed and boom, there was a venomous snake in there and that can definitely be an issue. But keep in mind, this is not the snake harassing or hunting people. It's uh, doing its own thing and you just happen to be there. Down that same vein, uh, everyone thinks that snakes are trying to eat you and oh, Trips is gonna, Trips is gonna size me up to eat me, isn't he? He's a python, right? There is only one extant species of snake that has eaten a person on record. And that is the longest growing snake left in the world, the reticulated python. Now these guys can potentially get up to 30 feet. That's very rare. But uh, this is a huge snake. But even then, even if you're walking through the jungle in Southeast Asia where these guys are from, they're not gonna chase you down and hunt you. They're strictly ambush predators and they can find a bunch of food sources in their native range that they are less nervous to try to eat than a full-size human being that probably weighs roughly the same as the snake, right? They're gonna look for better options when possible. And when you think about it, there are a lot better things to fear than snakes. For example, every year, our planet Earth hurdles through the torrid meteor stream. That's hundreds of giant space rocks flying at speeds that our brains can barely even comprehend. And many of those rocks are big enough where if they made contact with the Earth would absolutely wipe out most, if not all, life on this planet. And don't get me started on overdue super volcanoes, Billy. So, fear the torrid meteor stream and super volcanoes, not these adorable little critters. Well, Billy, Trips, and I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, like and subscribe. But uh, that's gonna do it. We'll see you next time.